We're moments of heated debate today during a D.C. Council hearing looking into the district's preparedness for Ebola. As Mike Kinnean reports, hospital executives and health care workers don't exactly see eye to eye, eye to eye on how they prepared they are for a possible patient. So let's not blow this out of proportion. During this health committee roundtable, D.C. Councilmember David Grasso pushed back against claims by nurses that district hospitals are unprepared for Ebola. It's a serious issue. Absolutely. We take it very seriously and we are petrified and we are unprepared. Grasso says those claims create unnecessary fear. We haven't had a case that's uh, manifested itself in the District of Columbia at this point. Um, and when we do, I'm sure that the hospitals in this city are taking the precautionary and necessary steps to prepare for that. But Providence Hospital ER nurse Joetta Lynn and other members of the D.C. Nurses Association, representing hospital personnel across the district, say they don't have the necessary protective gear and they've received little to no hands-on training. We are afraid and we are the healthcare professionals. We are afraid because we've been ignored. But the D.C. Health Department and hospital executives paint a very different picture. They're much better prepared uh, today than they were yesterday and given their constant uh, uh, discussions with each other and with the uh, appropriate public health officials, they'll be even better tomorrow. In fact, at Providence, the chief medical officer says protective equipment has been available and more shipments are arriving. We have also had training for individual um, departments, um, focusing on the areas um, on 2 South ICU in the emergency room that are most likely to be um, uh, involved. Hospitals do acknowledge there's been a backlog in supplies across the country, especially PPE personal protective equipment. But if need be, D.C.'s health department says it could stockpile those supplies at any hospital caring for an Ebola patient. I have to prepare all institutions here. Would I have preferred institutions where to send the patients? Yes. But I also can tell you all institutions will be able to screen Ebola now and protect their own staff. Ultimately, health officials repeatedly emphasize that contracting Ebola requires direct contact with body fluids of someone showing symptoms, someone who's recently traveled from West Africa. Furthermore, with the NIH nearby, a CDC field office in Washington, and more than a decade of first responder hazmat training post 9-11, they say D.C. is likely one of the best prepared cities for a possible Ebola case. Reporting in the newsroom, Mike Kinney, News Channel 8.